guys, welcome to the DMX Show. I'm your host Shane. I've been getting a ton of requests to cover the Jelly Bean version of the AOKP ROM. Some of you guys know that they had been putting out nightlies for quite some time. There were several unofficial ports for the Galaxy S3 and other devices, uh, but AOKP has finally released their first build and now they're up to their second build. These builds are stable and uh, everything's working in these builds, especially I've noticed for the Samsung Galaxy S3, everything is working perfectly. Uh, this is definitely worthy of a daily driver. It has all the features that you've come to know and love, plus it's just pure speed. So I'm going to show you guys real quick before we get into everything, just how fast it is. Uh, you really can fly through the home screens, and then if you pull up your app drawer, you can really see how fast it is. Incredibly fast. So now we'll go to settings, or we'll go to news and weather. Actually, we'll go to settings, and about phone, and we're running Jelly Bean 4.1.1. Uh, this is build version 7, uh, which is the latest. Actually, no, I flashed the baseband. So this is not built on uh, the latest build over the air. This is still on the previous, I think it was version 5. And here is AOKP build number 2 uh, for D2 Verizon, which is the Samsung Galaxy S3 for Verizon. It also features the CyanogenMod kernel. And like I said, it does fly. Uh, so... It does come with Nova Launcher. I prefer the stock launcher, uh, but if you want, you can do the Nova Launcher. Uh, some people really like that. And I think that's it. It comes with a new super user that's all updated. Wi-Fi Tether works straight out the box with this. And I think that's about it as far as applications are concerned. Uh, we'll go into settings and ROM control. So if you've ever run AOKP, then you already kind of know what's going on with the ROM control. It's just a ton of customization. I mean, you could seriously customize your phone for an hour. I mean, you could tweak and, and customize and mod for, like I said, hours on end. So if we go into general UI, there's a, a few things here. You can add a custom boot animation. This is new to, to uh, the Jelly Bean version. Uh, you actually just go to download. And if you have a bootanimation.zip, which is what I have, the GS3 bootanimation.zip, you can select that and install it directly from the ROM control, which is really cool. And I'll show you guys that animation on the outro here. Um, as you guys know, AOKP comes with the unicorn boot animation. Some of you guys like that, some of you don't. This just adds an easy way to change that. You have custom carrier label. I have Droid Modder X there. So when I pull down my pull down, I have a Droid Modder X. And then there's a few other things here as well, like allow 180 degree rotation. A lot of you guys are familiar with that. You can turn your phone upside down and it uh, rotates with you. You can also force the tablet UI, but it does require a reboot. Uh, for any of you guys that have played with like an Asus Transformer Prime, it just makes the notification bar, instead of it pulling down, you pull it up from the bottom here. And that's really all there is to that. If we go back, there's lock screen options. You can allow lock screen rotation, so if I get into my lock screen here, I can actually rotate this like if I was on a tablet. It's pretty cool. You can add uh, your battery stats there as well. You can add, let's see, you can add uh, volume wake, volume music controls. You can enable weather and calendar right there on your lock screen. Power menu, this would be your power menu, uh, your reboot menu. You can actually add toggles to that from here. Navigation bar. I choose not to enable this on my Galaxy S3 simply because we already have capacitive buttons and all it does is take up extra space on my screen. However, uh, with AOKP, you can add your own custom buttons here. So you could actually have uh, quick app navigation buttons instead of like your normal standard navigation buttons. So you could have like a YouTube button, a Twitter button, or a Gmail button. That would be probably the only reason that I would ever use that. But then, like I said, that shows up no matter where you are, it's always going to be there. So it really does take up screen real estate. Personally, I just stick with the capacitive buttons, but that's up to you. And uh, battery options, you can change the icon style. I always go with text only, but there's several other options there. You can do a battery bar like in my UI and change the style there as well. And uh, you can change the battery bar color. If you choose that clock, you can go with center clock. If you go to clock style, you have right clock or center clock. I always go with center clock. You can choose to have AM, PM, and also the day of the week, and then you can change the color here on the fly as well, just to show you how easily all that works. 
toggles this would be your pull down toggles here i prefer uh, this style because it just uh, it's a whole lot cleaner to me but you can choose the toggle layout to go with that style there to where you have buttons on and off uh, you can choose to enable different toggles like lte uh, tether and torch those are all good toggles to have and you can also change the order as well just by dragging and dropping like so and I'm gonna go back with the clean layout in case you guys are wondering the pink hat there that's your swagger toggle it does nothing uh, it's just there for looks if someone asks you when you pull out your phone what is that you can say oh that's my swagger toggle they'll probably get a laugh out of that you can also choose choose icon or text only and then there are some brightness settings as well uh, you do have signal settings and LED settings. This is so uh, for your notification. You can actually change the color of the LED, uh, change the brightness, and how often it beeps. Sound settings. You can enable the volume panel, so you can do like your equalizer, uh, weather options, vibration options, and then one of the most important options is your performance options. You go ahead and grant super user access, and now you can overclock, underclock. You can set custom governors. Uh, you can change your voltage settings, and then there's some other settings here as well. Uh, fast charge. If you wanted to plug your phone into your computer, you guys know that it will slowly charge because it's not giving full power from the USB cord on the computer, so that's what that's for. And then a daily reboot uh, just allows your phone to reboot once a day. Uh, like it says it's not scheduled here, so that would just happen randomly throughout the day, once a day, uh, just to you know make your phone go a little faster. So those are some cool settings there. Uh, other than that, we do have the theme settings. So you can actually change your theme on the fly. Most of you guys already know about this. Uh, to install the themes, you just go to the Play Store and search for CM10 or AOKP themes. And a whole list of them come up. Most of them are free. Some of them are a dollar. Some of them are two dollars. Uh, so you just apply it. And it takes just a few seconds and it will apply your theme. And it just really changes the whole look and feel of your phone. So you see now all my settings are totally different here. Uh, if we go into device options, there's a few more options that we can choose from. This, these are specifically for the Galaxy S3. Uh, you have screen settings and sensor settings. Um, if you're really technical, you can mess with those. Otherwise, I would suggest staying away from those. But guys, this has been my review of AOKP Jelly Bean for the Samsung Galaxy S3 on Verizon. Uh, quickly, we're just going to run through the installation process. You'll want to grab the ROM from the link in the description and go ahead and grab your Jelly Bean or your JBG apps. And then you're going to reboot into recovery. I choose to use Twerp Recovery, but you can also do this in Clockwork Mod Recovery as well. It's very simple to install. You're just going to wipe data, wipe cache, wipe down the cache, and install the ROM. Then you'll install your G apps. So that's really all you need to know. But if you want to stick around and watch me do it, you can. So now we're in TeamWin Recovery Project. We're just going to wipe, factory reset, swipe to wipe, cache, swipe to wipe. Dive it, cache, swipe to wipe. We go back and install. We're looking for the AOKP build number two. You'll select that and swipe to flash. And then you're looking for your JB uh, G apps, which they're not here for some reason. I must have deleted them. So you would you would go ahead and install those JB G apps. Uh, once you're finished, you'll go back and reboot system. And this is the custom boot animation that I installed um, by doing that in the settings. So you'll see that. But anyways, guys, you can find me at droidmoderx.com for the latest in Android and technology news. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. We're giving away a Samsung Galaxy S3 tomorrow. So be sure that you go to the Twitter account for further instructions. Be looking for my tweets. I'll tweet out instructions on how to enter for that. Uh, be sure to click on the subscribe button right there for more coverage on the Verizon Galaxy S3 as well as uh, any other devices that come out on Verizon. I'll be sure to cover those as well. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. You don't know how much it helps me. I really do appreciate it. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.